The whole of the Euro system is grinding to a halt. A lot of my country people are in denial. We cannot possibly continue with this type of medicine. People uh, get angry day by day. I don't think I will live to see the end of this crisis. The entry into the Eurozone. The numbers were fraudulent. They were all mythic. It's not a myth, it's a lie. It's a bloody lie. The Greek state is on the block. After years of chronic overspending, the knives are out. 20% of public sector jobs are about to go. Wages paid by government are being chopped by up to 30%. Nothing is ring-fenced, neither social security nor defence, not even health. Taxes are going up and VAT is about to hit 23%. If you think the squeeze is hurting in Britain, try feeling the pain of Greece. I've come here to find out how things went so terribly wrong and to look at what the future holds, not just for this beleaguered nation, but the entire Eurozone project. This is an insight into how an economy was broken by debt and delusion, prompting a crisis that threatens to sink the European single currency. Ten years ago, here in Greece's parliament, the then Prime Minister, Kostas Simitis, welcomed his country's adoption of the euro with promises of greater stability and new horizons. Fast forward the video to today and Greece is completely bust. The comedy of its fraudulent entry into the eurozone has turned into tragedy for millions of ordinary bewildered citizens. The story they were sold of rising prosperity for all was nothing more than a Greek myth. After the Olympic Games in 2004, Greece's government conceded that the cost of hosting the event had pushed up its country's deficit well above EU limits. But when the European Commission began delving into the scale of overborrowing, the Greek government was forced to come clean. The books had been cooked, with chunks of military spending conveniently omitted and tax receipts wildly overestimated. In 1999, the official deficit was 1.8% of GDP. That was wrong. It was really 3.4%. For years, this conflation of lies and statistics continued. But in 2009, there was a devastating revelation. The budget deficit was not 3.7%, as previously declared. It was actually 14%. The government's finances were shot to pieces. How did Greece become so dazzled by economic mythology? Well, its leaders were desperate to enter the Eurozone, where they could borrow heavily and cheaply, even though it meant that in troubled times, Greece would not be able to devalue its currency. Now, the bill for all that profligacy has arrived, and there's no hope of it being paid. Back in May 2010, everybody pretended that uh, Greece was bailed out. Greece was not bailed out, it was simply given uh, a very expensive credit card by which to pay off its mortgage after having lost its job. That credit card was issued when Greece went to the IMF and the EU for a humiliating rescue package, which forced the country's leaders to adopt tough austerity measures. They told the people, we ate the money together. 
perhaps. But now there's collective indigestion. And in Athens, the people's fury has led to violence. Resentment and distrust of the political classes remains palpable. A lot of people don't pay their taxes, and especially those who have the money. Uh, this is the main problem, I believe, that they cannot collect taxes. We're going to be on the streets, without work, without nothing. But we must go from, from the euro. Okay. It's for us, like funeral. It's our funeral, the euro. For Konstantinos, it was his contempt for those at the top that brought him onto the streets in June. He has a good degree and holds down two jobs. During the week he works in sales and at weekends in a bar. Yet even that is not enough to support an independent life. I met him outside the flat he used to rent. Age 31, he expected to be building a solid career. But as wages fell and prices rose, he was forced to go back and live with his parents. The problem is uh, the fact that uh, there are uh, no uh, equal chances. Uh, people uh, get angry day by day, and that will uh, end up in a social explosion. And when that... Uh, Do you see more reality, riots here in, in Greece happening? Yes, Do you expect yes, that? Yes. So are you saying Greece is fundamentally corrupt? Yes, that's... Uh, something uh, that uh, we are uh, facing today. This is my birthplace, okay? I, I don't want to leave it. I admit that politicians uh, made uh, many mistakes, but uh, we have two options. The one is to live here and work abroad, and the other is to stay here and face the problems. The causes of these problems are not difficult to understand but finding a way out of them is, to say the least, challenging for a society that is used to living way, way beyond its means. We kept acting as if we still had the drachma. We, we, we kept giving raises, annual raises, to, 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 as if we still had the drachma and that we would be able to devalue. So we acted totally irresponsibly. Uh, they started borrowing. They said, why not? People are giving us money. Then uh, the European Union was giving us money to restructure our agriculture, but we didn't restructure it. The money went to the peasants, but they bought Mercedes cars. And what really happened with Greece is that because one removed the balance of payments and currency constraints that were there, Greece went out on a spending spree, both governments and uh, really individuals. One example of massive state outlay is the plush underground rail system. Cash was pumped in to finance refurbishments and build new stations after Greece had joined the Euro. But empty advertising billboards are just one indicator that lavish projects such as this are not exactly covering their costs. So this is the Athens Metro. Very impressive, very new, very modern. It obviously costs a lot of money to build. Have a look at this though, this is the, uh, the entry barrier. Well, actually, there's no barrier. The whole system relies on honesty. You pay if you want to. But if you don't want to, and you feel lucky, you can just walk through. A bit like the tax system. It's estimated that up to 30 billion euros of taxes go uncollected in Greece every year. Evasion is rife in a system where earnings are largely self-declared. The issue borders on farce as government tax snoopers use helicopters to spot swimming pools. Why? Well, they indicate real wealth and can be checked against their owner's income statements. Dodging tax, it seems, has become a sophisticated business. And this is one of those tax wheezes. Here in Greece, if you own a boat of a certain size, you pay a yacht tax except that is if it's used for commercial purposes. So what some owners do is install their house servants on the yacht, charge them a nominal rent, 
claim that it's a business residence and Eureka, no tax. For those in the private sector who work for conventional businesses and are taxed in the normal way, the long list of participants in Greece's black economy is a source of despair. Lawyers, doctors, plumbers, electricians, you name it. There are particular uh, professional classes that constantly avoid paying tax. Why? Because they know that there isn't a strong tax regime. Because I read, uh, in fact, I read here in Greece that many of these doctors were declaring an income of 12,000 euros or less a year. Well, I can give you even worse examples of uh, plumbers that uh, have at least four to five people working um, in, in, in their company and they were declaring half the income that their workers were declaring. So uh, that, that's, that's the irony, unfortunately. It's, it's, it's laughable, but it's tragic. This is the office that the finance ministry is hoping will help stem Greece's epidemic of tax evasion. Here, we receive calls from people reporting suspected tax fraud. Bravo, Carlos. This is the sexoflitiki. The sinner, the unaffected, the 700 euro, the sinner for the for the episcopes who made it, but this is a copse apodixi. It's for the diafigi and the unaffected. The phones here are ringing, but so are the alarm bells. This is clearly woefully under-resourced and the sums it tracks on a daily basis are often just a tiny fraction of the money owed by tax-dodging. It's a big problem because the Greek has been in the forward movement and it needs a big effort. The best example of tax evasion that you've been able to capture? In the cost of... Τα σκάφη αυτή τη στιγμή είναι τα τουριστικά σκάφη που έχουν γίνει επαγγελματικά. And they say how much? Tens of thousands, millions. Till now we we win about uh, uh, 300 uh, million uh, euros. In part two, I'll ask the church, Greece's biggest landowner after the state, about its contribution to a system. And I'll be looking at why selling off the country's choicest assets is unlikely to be plain sailing.